Hi, this video is for Chem 2045, and we're working with exam number three from fall 2009. We're going to do problem number nine right now. And problem number nine says we're, we have a flask that's one liter, and initially there is um, CO2 and O2 in it, and then they react and it asks us to identify um, or calculate the final pressure in the flask. And um, so the first thing we're going to do is write down what we know, which is the information given in the problem. Um, we can figure out what's going on a little better by drawing out our problem. So we have uh, our flask initially. And then there's a reaction. So we have um, the initial flask, which has a volume of one liter. But then the final flask also has a volume of one liter. And we know there's a reaction. And it gives us the reaction, the equation for this reaction, which is two CO2. Oh, that's just two CO plus one oxygen gives us two CO2s. So this um, is our chemical equation and um, we know we have a reaction going on and we want to find the final pressure. So to do that we need to figure out how many moles or the partial pressure at the end of this. So we can use our uh, chemical equation to make an ICE table. And then once we figure out the final um, species in our container, we can find the uh, final pressure. Now, to do this problem, we're going to need to make a couple assumptions. So our first assumption is that we're working with an ideal gas, as we've learned in class. And so we can use the equation PV equals nRT. Also, we can assume, um, since they give us a volume um, and pressure, but not moles and temperature, um, we're going to have to assume one of these. So the easiest thing to assume is that we have one mole initially. And I chose this, um, which you'll see the reason why later on when we start doing our uh, change in the um, chemical components. So right here I'll write the temperature is constant. So to start off, um, we're going to need to find the mole composition, or the number of moles of each species to start with. But to do that, all I gave us was the pressure, the partial pressure of the carbon monoxide and the partial pressure of the oxygen. Now you need to try to think of a way to turn the partial pressures into the um, number of moles of each of those components. To do that, we can think of the um, tools that we learned for gases. We know that um, the partial pressure of one species is equal to the mole fraction of that species times the total pressure. And we also know that the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of each component. So, and it goes on and on and on. So here, um, our total pressure is going to be equal to just two components to begin with. So this is the initial pressure, and that's going to be uh, 2.6 atmospheres given to us uh, from CO carbon monoxide and then plus 5.6 atmospheres given to us by oxygen. Oops, it's actually 5.4, 5.4 atmospheres. I think. Oops, no, it's 5.8, 5.8 atmospheres. 
So the total pressure is going to be 8.4 atmospheres. Now we can find the mole fraction because we have um, the total pressure from the beginning and the partial pressure um, of each component at the beginning. So if we uh, rearrange this equation, we have the mole fraction of a species equals the partial pressure of that species divided by the total pressure of, at that time. So the partial, I mean the mole fraction of carbon monoxide initially is going to be the partial pressure, which is 2.6 atmospheres, divided by the total initially, which is 8.4 atmospheres. And plugging this into our calculator, we'll get 0 0.309 five. No units. And then we do the same thing for oxygen. Um, we had 5.8 atmospheres divided by the total, which is 8.4 atmospheres. And plugging this into our calculator, we get 0 0.690476. no units. So now we have the molar fractions of each component and with our assumption of one mole we can easily convert these mole fractions into um, the initial moles of each component. So the number of moles of carbon monoxide is just going to be the mole fraction times the total number of moles. which will be 0 0.3095 times one mole gives us 0 0.3095 moles of carbon monoxide. And we can do the same thing for oxygen. carbon monoxide initially, and then for oxygen we'll have 1.38095. Oops, wait, that's not right. I did that wrong. It's going to be 0 0.690476 moles of O2. So now that we have the initial number of moles of each of those reactants, we can plug it into our a ICE chart over here. So initially we have 0 0.30 095 moles of CO. And then oxygen, we have 0 0.69. I rounded it just for our chart. And then um, 0 moles initially of CO2. Now the change is going to be um, minus 2x for carbon monoxide, minus x for oxygen, and then plus 2x for CO2. Um, to find out how much we use of each of these components, we're going to have to find out what x is. Um, now, be sure not to get x confused with the uh, mole fraction that I used over here, which is also x. This is a different x. So to find um, the amount that we used of each reactant, we're going to have to find out what the limiting reactant is first. To do that, we'll have to figure out how much of each reactant uh, produces how much CO2. So we'll start with CO2 here, or carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide, um, we had uh, 0 0.3095 moles. Oops, I think this is going to run off the board. I'm going to erase this portion so we have more room.
So if we use all of our carbon monoxide, we'll have 0 0.3095 moles of carbon monoxide um, produces 2 moles of CO2 for every 2 moles of carbon monoxide that we use coming from our equation up here. So crossing out like terms, we end up with 0 0.3095 moles of CO2 produced if we use all of our carbon monoxide. Now if we use all of our O2, um, we can calculate by using 6.69 Zero four seven six moles of O2, which produces two moles of CO2 for every one mole of O2. That's our conversion from the equation up here, canceling like terms, and then that means O2 is going to be able to produce 1.38095 moles of CO2. So that means CO2 is our limiting reagent because it doesn't produce as much CO2 as O2 is. It's going to be used up first. So knowing that, um, we can see that CO2 is going to, or carbon monoxide is going to be used up in the end, so it's going to be zero. Um, and from this, we can figure out what x is, because um, 0 0.3095 minus 2x equals 0. So I'm going to erase this portion so we have some more room. And dividing each side by 2, we get 0 0.15476. So we plug in x up here. Um, that means we're going to have 0 0.535716 moles of O2 in the end. Uh, remember, I rounded uh, 0.69 just for the sake of putting it in the chart because we needed more room. And then um, if we add 2x over here on this side, we end up with 0 0.3095 moles of or CO2 in the end. So now we have um, the final number of moles in our flask. That means in uh, total for our final portion, we have um, plugging that into our calculator, which is uh, the number of moles of O2 plus the number of moles of CO2. That will be 0.8. 4.5238 moles. Now we can use the p equation to figure out um, the final pressure of our flask. So PV equals nRT. Uh, if we look at our equation here, we'll notice that we're looking for pressure. We have volume. We have the final uh, number of moles, but we don't know temperature. Because we made an assumption for moles, we can't assume what the temperature is as well. So um, to deal with this problem, we can uh, see that by pulling PV NRT to one side, it equals 1. That means for any pressure, volume, mole, or temperature, um, 
everything is going to equal 1 in this equation right here. So that means if we have um, P initial times the initial volume over the initial moles times R T initial, that's going to equal to um, 1, which is going to equal P final times V final over N final times R times T final. So all we did was equate the initial um, characteristics to the final characteristics. So that means they're going to equal each other. Um, so right now, uh, now that we've equated these two pieces, we can uh, do some simplifying. We can cross out volume, because it's going to stay the same. Temperature is going to stay constant, that was told right here. Um, and also R is a constant, so we can cross that out as well. Now you can see that what we're left with is pressure over moles on each side. So I'm going to write that over here. Initial pressure over initial moles equals the uh, final pressure over the final moles. Now you see we have the um, total number of moles initially, that was our assumption. The total no, uh, number of moles finally, which we calculated, and the um, pressure we had um, initially. So now we can find the final pressure. So putting pressure over to one side with a little bit of algebra, we have the initial pressure divided by the initial number of moles times the number of moles in the flask in the end. So this is going to be equal to uh, 8.4 atmospheres times the final number of moles in our flask, which is 0.845238. And then divide all of this by the initial number of moles, which was 1 cross out moles, and we're left with atmospheres, that means we did our calculations correctly. And then this is going to be equal to 7.1 atmospheres, which is answer choice E. There's our final answer here. So the thing you should take away from this problem is to um, figure out what the problem is asking for. You can write down a little schematic drawing to help you see what's going on. And you also want to know um, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures and how to use your equations for gases.